Holy Father, Holy Father, I'm screaming. Holy Father, oh my Holy Father. Hello my beautiful babes and welcome to the first makeup video of the year. So when I was trying to like figure out what videos I wanted to do for the new year, you know, plan out like the first couple of months, I decided to make a poll here on YouTube asking you guys what type of videos you want to see more of from me. Because to be frank, I really, in my head, I just felt like, okay, maybe everybody's probably tired of the makeup videos. But to my surprise, literally like 54% or something like that, like a huge majority was makeup videos. Many of you guys are still here for the makeup videos. So here we are. It's only right to start this year off with an updated makeup routine. Hello. This makeup today is definitely giving like UK babe. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. This routine is not for the faint hearted or the subtle babes. This year we need our makeup to be top level, okay? Magic. Top level, just like our blessings. You feel me? I feel like because it's a new year, I kind of have to reintroduce myself just a little bit. But my name is Lex and I create content for my beautiful black babes with taste. So if you're here today, it means you have good taste. Good job. But yeah, enough intro talk. Today I'm going to be showing you guys what I do differently or what I kept the same. My favorite products, alternatives, all of that, okay? Let me get you guys hooked on this makeup routine. So I'm going ahead to start off with a brand new face. Brandy, why do I keep saying that? I'm going ahead to start off with a fresh face, no product on my face. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Let's just cut this real quick because it was way too late at night for my brain to function properly throughout this video, as y'all saw. But she'll be back here and there. Sis actually made some good points, okay? For now, we'll just kind of do this voiceover style. But I've washed and got my face free of any oils or dirt that may have been lingering. I've got my favorite playlist playing to get in the vibes. I've moisturized my lips so they can be ready by the time we're done. And y'all keep asking for my playlist, so I'll go ahead and have it linked down below. It's definitely an essential for me when I'm getting ready, especially when you know you're about to transform. Like, transform into the top level babe that you are you feel me we'll get to moisturizer and primer later on but when my face is dry it's just the perfect time for me to do my brows and that's really why I love starting with my brows first because I don't have any oils or products interfering with them you feel me my brow routine really hasn't changed much if you ask me but boy have I seen the light when it comes to what brow gel I use. If you're familiar with many of my older videos, I was obsessed, as in obsessed with using the Eco Styler, or no, the Eco Booster Edge Control. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with it if you really ask me, like I still use it here and there, but there was just too much inconsistency with the product line and the formula. Half of the time when I got their gel, it would be so heavily oil-based and that's the last thing that I need for my brows. Now I just use the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze and I just use as much product as I need to make sure that my brows don't go any throughout the entire day and for me sometimes that's using a few layers okay with how curly my brows can be but I like to brush my tails sideways and then the rest of my brows I brush them upwards but once we've tacked down that brow with the product I just give it some time you know a little bit of time to dry down completely before moving on to anything else about two minutes should really do the trick like I just don't like working on my brows while they're still wet because it just gives me such a hard time with putting any brow product on there and you can obviously see the difference between a wet and a completely dry brow it's basically kind of giving my brows a fake perm. I've heard a lot of people saying that if you do leave this open, it dries out. So just be really careful with not leaving it open. I love shaping up my brows with a brow pencil. Even if you use a brow pen or a pomade, you really should be good. But for me, I just love using this beauty supply pencil because it's so inexpensive. And honestly, like I don't need that much product on my brow, as you can see. But I just like making sure that I have that pencil really, really sharpened so I can get some crisp and defined lines. And I'm just starting out with lining the bottom of my brows first. And most times I come a little lower in the front area to kind of help me with, with like creating a little bit of an arch if that makes sense and I also extend my brow tails just a little bit for some dramatics and then I just complete the rest of my brows by filling it in as follows I do go into all the technicalities of my brows in my brow tutorial so if you need the full breakdown of my brow routine then you should definitely check her out because my brows are already pretty thick I don't really go too crazy with filling it in if you follow my old tutorials you'll see that I love doing these strokes in the front what I've realized is that I prefer to do it now at the 
end of my routine when I do it in the beginning as I'm doing my nose contour and eyeshadow it kind of buffs out so I've just decided at this point I'm not even gonna put those strokes in until the very end of my routine and once I'm done I just move straight into concealing them with the absolute my absolute personal favorite brow concealer and this is the makeup revolutions concealer in the shade C13 it's not too bright for my under brows it's literally just the perfect shade for my complexion and also the consistency of it just makes sense for concealing your brows like it's not like that runny concealer at all it's just I don't know it's just the right thick kind of consistency to just easily glide onto your skin like butter and just stay in the exact same place that you place it without it looking like it. honestly I'm talking too much but the concealer is bomb okay I do take my precious time when it comes to concealing the bottom and the top of my brows because one mess up and my entire day is done for like I don't want to do anything else but as for the top of the brows um I really just go in with a foundation that is the epitome the epitome of a shade match for me I love using this foundation on the top of my brows to just clean up my top brow without the harshness that a brighter shade would give me as you can see <laughs> can you even see it when I put this foundation on you can't even tell that it's there it blends it's just ugh the perfect shade obviously I love using this because it doesn't give me halo brows one thing we're not gonna bring into 2022 if you're still doing it is halo brows please let it go let it die hello brows for what in 2022 personal preference but am I biased and think it's the best choice I do and do I think you should do it? I do. And I don't always need that foundation for sharpness, but sometimes it just kind of comes in clutch, especially when my brows look a little too thick. So, you know, I'll just go in and like kind of thin out my brows just a little bit. Once we have done the brows, we have officially escaped the hardest parts. And all that's left now is to just go in and blend all of that product out. And I'm using this Real Techniques 200 blending brush. Um, And it's, I don't know, it's really just perfect for blending out and just buffing out that concealer and foundation. Obviously, you don't want to get too close to your brows to where you're disrupting all the hard work that you've done but for now we're done we're kind of done with the brows and we'll come back to her in a little bit once the rest of our face is done so just kind of add the finishing touches or like clean up anything that got messed up along the way I especially love coming back at the end now to just kind of add those extra hair strokes that I usually add in the front but for now so far so good okay like I'm loving the shape that we have so I'm content with just finally moving forward and starting on our foundation base I'm starting Starting off with my go-to primer at the moment, the Milk Hydro Grip Primer, and this is just perfect for keeping your makeup in place throughout the entire day. And I apply a very generous amount of this on my skin, and I just tap it all in. For some reason, I don't know if this actually makes a difference, but I prefer tapping that primer onto my skin as opposed to like rubbing it in, if that makes sense. Especially under my eyes where the concealer is going to be going onto, and for me personally, I prefer primers like this as opposed to like silicone-based primers or even like watery like serum like primers just in case you do decide to moisturize before priming here's a moisturizer that I started using recently but I'm starting my base routine by adding some pigment onto my cheeks using the NYX sweet cheeks blush cream at first I was gonna try and do something a little bit different or like use a new um a new blush cream that I got and it's like this elf blush pot like cream or something like that but yeah it humbled me very quickly and i just went ahead and just stuck with what i'm used to and one thing about my nyx blush cream it will never like never do me dirty it applies very easily it's not blotchy like many other cream blushes that i've tried and the key for me especially to create like these fake cheekbones is to really just keep that product as high up as possible so wherever your natural contour line is do not go below that because if you happen to bring it any lower than what it needs to be you can easily like easily change the shape of your face i did go in and add another layer because girl a little blush don't hurt nobody okay all this blush will be slightly covered by other products so if you happen to go a little too crazy a little too od with the blush don't worry girl okay it's definitely not going to be the end of the world but one thing i have changed is also applying my contour underneath my foundation as well and for some reason 
which you guys will see in a little bit i just think this gives me more of like a seamless contour blend without all the harshness that comes with like contouring your face so i've applied it in all the areas that i would usually apply it you know my cheeks my forehead and i low-key do go in a little heavy with this product and I, there's absolutely like absolutely no shame in my game but it'll make sense once the foundation is on so yeah put on as much contour as you want because at the end of the day you can still control how much is visible once you put that foundation on top of it but again with this product don't bring it too far down below your natural contour line and and blending that product and using the morphe e63 something like that it's gonna be on the screen it just fits perfectly for contour next thing we're gonna do is finally go in with our foundation and the foundation of choice today is the Too Faced born this way foundation in the shade tiramisu and i'm placing this at first using a small flat blah, 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 blah. i'm placing this at first using a small flat brush essentially because i'm going to be using that foundation to kind of like carve out underneath where my contour is so instead when you use a foundation to chisel it out it just looks more natural than using a concealer i hope that makes sense but you'll see how much it makes sense in the end okay i place that foundation in all those areas of my face where there isn't any contour or blush and especially where i have prominent dark marks but to blend that out i'm using my real techniques instant pop face brush and if you aren't hip to this brush yet first of all do you really watch my videos i can't talk about it enough i really cannot talk about this brush enough but check it out links will be down below you especially want to use a tapping technique to kind of blend this all in i found that that technique just works perfectly with not making your foundation look like too streaky or anything like that but i did go in and add another small layer of foundation so just certain parts of my face where i feel like i needed you know i kind of wanted a bit more coverage and i also added a little bit of that foundation on the sides of my nose not directly on my nose because i honestly prefer having as little product as possible on my nose because my nose can it tends to get really oily so the only thing that i really put on my nose is like concealer and contour i don't even put primer on my nose if you didn't notice but i blended out all of the remaining foundation keeping it exactly where i placed it and whatever product is left on the brush i'll just go in and gently tap that brush over my cheeks to you know kind of kind of blend in my blush a little bit and just make everything one big union you know what i mean like just try as much as possible not to completely cover up your blush and contour because at the end of the day you put it there for a reason you feel me but as you can see we've already made so much progress everything looks so good moving on to brighten up my face a bit and kind of add more dimension to my face we're gonna move into concealing certain areas of our face i'm using the juvia's place concealer in shade number nine definitely a go-to of mine if it ain't broke don't fix it um this concealer has just been a staple of mine but i'm placing that concealer under my eyes without spreading it out too far out i'm not totally against like the little tiktok concealer hack where you add concealer like by the corner of your eyes but for me when i do it i just find that it comes off a bit too harsh and with the technique i'll show you you'll see how we can still get the same look using a different technique essentially but in this step i also like adding my contour cream to my nose and this will help as a guide for not bringing that concealer too far up my nose and also when we blend out that nose contour and concealer simultaneously the blend is sweet like the blend is beautiful i kind of wanted to show y'all my top two sponges at the moment and the first one is the real techniques blending sponge and the other is the shein i think like she glam sponge or something like that they both work really well but today i did decide to use my real techniques blending sponge because it's just it's a familiar spot for me to give you a really seamless a really nice blend please make sure that you're washing your sponge i'm tired of seeing the dirty sponges that you used last weekend to go clubbing the same sponge is now coming on your face dry how do you expect to do skin work with last week's foundation still on the same sponge does it make does it make sense like does it does it make sense please wash your sponge and after washing your sponge just take your towel and squeeze the water out after washing your sponge and you have a perfectly good working sponge the technique that i use is just going in with that sponge tapping my concealer in the same place what i'm doing at this moment is just allowing some of that concealer to be soaked up by the sponge but at the same time i'm also blending what is in that area and now with whatever is extra or whatever is left on the sponge i'm just gonna drag it out 
and blend it all the way out into the outer corners of my eyes and lastly for the inner corner of my under eye I'm just taking again still that like excess product that is left on the sponge and just blending it in towards my nose and you can just see how seamlessly everything blends out I really love this technique that I do and it just works out perfectly for my under eyes and I'm just gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other side The blend is looking so sweet, so beautiful, but I'm a heavy concealer type of girl, so one layer is definitely not enough for me, okay? We're gonna go on with another layer of the Juvia's Place Concealer in shade number nine on these areas of my face, and I'm using a smaller amount this time around because, you know, I don't need too much. But also for a little bit of brightening, I am using this random lighter shade of concealer that I had laying around. You could honestly use whatever concealer you want. I just picked this one out because it was there. While I let that concealer kind of sit in for a little bit i'm just gonna go in and blend out the edges of my nose contour and i'm mainly just blending out those edges because we're gonna go in a little bit later to blend out the rest of that product while we're blending in the second layer of our concealer but for now i'm just using the brush to just slightly like you know blend out the edges and the brush i'm using will be listed down below i just don't think i remember the name of it but once i'm done with that the blend process for the concealer is almost identical to the first time that we did again i'm just keeping that concealer concentrated in the same place which is the inner part of my face and just letting the sponge kind of do its thing for a little bit soak up just a little bit of the product and then whatever excess is left I'm just gonna blend outwards this time I'm not blending it all the way out I'm just you know lightly just spreading that concealer out a little bit but now at this point whatever is left on the sponge I'm going to use that to blend together the concealer and contour combo you kind of don't want to be able to see where your concealer stops and where your contour starts that's something that I low-key have a little bit of a struggle with so I kind of make sure I'm a little bit conscious of it when I'm doing my makeup routine but with that being blended out we can now move into blending out the remaining concealer on our face the upper lip area is what I do next and now with the excess product of that I'm just gonna use whatever is left on the sponge to chisel out my contour and this is just perfect because I'm not using too much product to chisel that out so it doesn't end up being too harsh if that makes sense another thing that y'all have noticed is that I don't bring that too far into my face like I don't like chisel it out from my ear to like my lip if that makes sense lastly to blend out the concealer on my nose again I'm trying to keep that concealer in its place as much as possible I found that blending that concealer while turning my head to the side kind of helps a little bit with you know just keeping it in its place and once that nose contour is blended out a little bit better I'm just gonna use whatever excess is left on the sponge on my forehead and if you haven't noticed yet some parts of my face where I want like proper brightness and pigment to be at I place the concealer directly onto those areas and then other parts where I just kind of want like a little bit of pigments I just use whatever is left on the sponge so it's not too harsh some parts are brighter than others like you just have dimension all over it but now that all the liquid products have done their due diligence it's time for us to finally set all of them in place using our powder products. thank you god for tiktok because i have seen the light when it comes to this Huda beauty setting powder i have an alternative on the screen it's what i used to use and i still do from time to time but this Huda beauty one has hands down got to be one of my favorite powders it's so light and airy it just kind of sits on your skin so seamlessly and it actually takes little to no effort for it to look good i don't know how to make it make sense but it just kind of adjusts itself properly on your face i'll use it on and off throughout the remainder of my routine but for now i'm just using it to set that concealer in place and i'm not baking i'm just kind of tapping in as much product as needed to keep my concealer in all the areas of my face in place and honestly with how fine and textured this product is you can even set it all over your face without having any harsh flashbacks or casts or anything like that but my next step is to bring my blush back to life and just kind of reactivate it just a little bit using these two middle shades in my saharan blush palette and this palette is just a go-to of mine you probably have seen it in every single makeup tutorial of mine again if it ain't broke don't fix it okay i'm using this real techniques uh blush brush or powder brush i believe and if you can't tell by now real techniques brushes are really just really just that girl like they're so inexpensive but yet so effective 
perspective mm. yeah love them and honestly because you could still see the blush peeking from underneath i didn't go too crazy with how much i applied this time around and the fluffy brush i used just kind of made that a little bit easier for me because this brush kind of prevents you from packing way too much product on at a time it just applies the right subtle amount the next powder product is the l'oreal infallible complexion powder to set in and really just mattify our foundation i do get loads of questions on what shade that i use and my shade is deep amber number 375 i got this question or this comment so many times and it's in the description box if I didn't put it before I'm really sorry but it's in the description box this time around but to brighten up my under eye and kind of chisel out my nose a little bit I'm now gonna go in with my old faithful Laura Mercier translucent setting powder and I'm concentrating that mostly in the inner corners of my under eye and I'm mainly just using this powder for brightening I do go in with multiple layers using just small amounts at a time and as you can see this powder is a bit more on the like pigmented side as opposed to like the Huda Beauty setting powder but yeah I just like using this one specifically in this step like for brightening I love using this one and to set my nose concealer I'm just going down the bridge of my nose with that powder and then I'm setting the contour on my nose using the same powder that I used all over my face and I contour all the areas or regions of my nose and I'm blending out some of that product into my eyes a little bit to you know kind of warm up my eyelids a little bit more you can see that that powder brought proper warmth into my eyes. It just created a bit more dimension in that area. As for my lashes, I'm trying out this new mascara that was sent to me by Makeup Revolution. For now, I'm just applying that mascara on my top lashes to have them ready for my falsies. And I kind of leave my bottom lashes for now because I know I'll go in and add more powder underneath my eyes a few more times. So I'm not trying to have them interfere with each other. So I'm a really, really like watery eyed type of girl. So I have a whole routine in place to make sure that my eyes don't get too watery when I put my lashes on. And one of those steps is just setting my face in place with setting spray before I put my lashes on and first I'm setting my face with this makeup revolution setting spray this has really just been a go-to of mine here and there I really do like it when I'm not using the urban decay one this is what I'll be using another setting spray I've been getting a lot of recommendations on is the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray so when I get my hands on that I'll definitely update you guys but after letting that setting spray mostly dry down I tap my face all in using some of that Huda Beauty powder again and I'm really a matte type of girl so I powder my face as much as I can without getting get too dry you know what I mean usually I just go in again using that same setting spray but I decided to try out this milk hydro setting spray this time around and although TikTok did lie in saying that it wouldn't make your makeup transfer um I actually don't hate the setting spray like I don't think it was even really sold as a non-transferable setting spray I think that's just like something that TikTok kind of came up with but all in all I do kind of love the finish that it gave my makeup once it had dried down like I can't really explain what it did for me but I don't know hopefully you can kind of see it for yourself like I just really loved how it dried down but once it was all dry then I feel comfortable enough to put my lashes on the lashes that I love wearing is this kiss I envy lashes in numero uno these lashes are the only thing that actually stopped me from getting lash extensions because it's like if I can basically get the look with lashes why would I spend continuous amounts of money on lashes that are just gonna fall off in like three days you know but myself and these lashes have just been going strong for the longest time now and i really just hope that y'all don't buy it all up because yeah we're so tied honestly so tied but because i don't plan on applying any more powder under my eyes i'm now comfortable with doing my bottom lashes and this makeup revolution mascara you guys Woo! had me shook i didn't even think my bottom lashes could look the way they do like i'm so in love and it didn't even take multiple layers for it to look this way but anyways um one of the last steps in completing this look is finally applying my lip combo and i'll have everything listed down below i'm not really gonna break it down too much because you know it's pretty basic information but i will say that i really wanted to join the girls in getting the mac um cork liner or something like that and i tried it it's just not as dark for me it's just was not as dark as I'd like for it to be so I'll be sticking it through with my beauty supply products ain't no shame in my game I mix the color black and dark brown for the shade that really just gets me you know and to top it off I'm using morphe lip products and first I'm using this lipstick shade is gonna be down below because I don't remember I kind of patted that dry a little bit using a brush and I went over it using their gloss and freebird
and final step is just highlighting the bridge of my nose with this makeup revolution highlighter in whatever shade this is because i do not remember this product is so old but this just accentuates my nose a little bit more and it just kind of makes it look like i spent a little bit more time on her maybe even a little bit of money if you know what i mean but yeah that my loves is how i achieve my everyday makeup routine everything looks so cohesive they just work so well together but um i'm gonna leave y'all here please you can't tell me that you watched through this entire video and you haven't liked you haven't commented you haven't subscribed please make sure you're doing your due diligence down below and with lots of love i will see you guys in my next video holy father Holy Father, I'm screaming Holy Father, my Holy Father